the significance that you achieve by acquiring money, wealth, education, this or that, is only socially relevant. If nobody is around you, it means nothing. Becoming life significant means you captured a certain volume of life that just sitting here, this feels absolutely significant. So why this Shambhavi? What we are trying to do with this is to capture more life than we have right now. That if we sit here, just being alive is more than enough. Because this is the most significant aspect of your life is that you're alive right now, isn't it? Everything else is secondary. Everything else are arrangements which we made so that in some way it will facilitate enhancement of life. Either knowingly or consciously or unconsciously or in their own different ways, different human beings have captured different levels of life. The entire process, what we call a spiritual process, is essentially about becoming a more significant life, not in relation to somebody else, not being better than somebody. Just if I sit here, this is a fantastic life because it's significant by its own presence. Only if it's like this, then you will do life in a conscious manner. You will not be compelled to do anything. You will do things that really matter. You will not be compulsive about anything because just sitting here is very significant for you. Because life has become significant. Not thought, not emotion, not body, not things that we have gathered, but just the life process has become very significant. So significant that body, mind, wealth, society, everything becomes secondary in our experience. So yoga means we obliterate the boundaries of our individuality, the boundaries that we have established so that this life becomes so significant that your being becomes stronger than your thought, stronger than your emotion, stronger than all the things that people are saying about you, good or bad things. Every other thing that society confers upon you, you as a life is much more significant than all those things. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this conversation with Sadhguru. My work as a journalist, I often find myself in some of the most troubled places on earth and I realized just how little I know um, about living and life and how much there is to learn from Sadhguru. This talk tonight is done in partnership with TED Talks, which is basically the TED Talks of the mind. And uh, we will be talking a lot about uh, mental health as well as uh, in our society. It's heart is also allowed. Ha ha heart is also allowed. Great. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk a little from the heart as well as the head.
seldom do we see this number of people turn out to one of these events queuing for hours beforehand. But that really comes down to the power of Sadhguru and, and uh, the visionary that he is. He obviously needs no introduction. Uh, as you know, he's a mystic, a visionary, a yogi, a teacher, a humanitarian, and someone that uh, we can all learn something about uh, how we live life. Just earlier, we were speaking uh, in the green room about some of the atrocities and some of the things that have happened over the last few weeks and the sorts of things that we witness on a daily basis. And the kind of conversations that we were having in there, I, I, I realized just how little I know um, about living and life and how much there is to learn from him. Uh, so I hope that uh, you find uh, tonight, in a way, something that you can take away uh, from his words uh, of wisdom. Um, so I'll pass it on to Sadhguru. Life is just a combination of time and energy, isn't it? Limited amount of time, limited amount of energy. If you run into walls here and there, time and energy will go and your life will go. It's very important you run through the door, not through the wall. Yes, where there is openness, there you go. resentment, hatred, these are all poisons that you drink and you expect somebody else to die. No, life doesn't work like that. You drink poison, you die. It's a very fair life. That's all. It's not a morality whether you should get angry or not get angry. It's up to you if you want to make a mess out of yourself. There is a whole science of consecration. It's a very powerful science. You must come and experience. There is one here at the Tennessee Center. If you come to India, it will just blast you in the face. You don't have to believe anything. A large segment of population has reached this place without chemical help. They cannot even sit in one place quietly. If to be peaceful, you need a chemical, to be joyful, you need a chemical. To be healthful, you need a chemical. This will not bring joy. This will not bring well-being. Comfort and convenience can be achieved by fixing the outside. Joy and well-being cannot happen from outside. It has to happen from inside. If a small percentage of people become like this, just by their way of being, they will change the atmosphere in the world. Will we get to that critical mass? in the next ten, fifteen years is the challenge which we are striving for.
religions in this world proclaims that the god has created human beings but our evolutionary science is saying that human beings have come from monkeys which one should i believe in what do you feel closer to <laughs> so if you are going in forward gear go with darwin if you are in reverse gear go with god these are two different ways of doing the same thing